Okay, what a race uh, we just witnessed, the 57th annual Daytona 500, and uh, joining us up at the podium right now. Uh, joining us up here now is our race runner-up, and that's Kevin Harvick, our defending NASCAR Sprint Cup Series champion. He drives the number four Budweiser, Jimmy John's Chevrolet. And then our defending race winner, driving the number 88 Nationwide Chevrolet, is Dale Earnhardt Jr. Let's hear from Kevin first. Uh, Kevin, just talk about uh, how you thought the race un unfolded. Uh, certainly, uh, you know, it was it was just one heck of a Daytona 500. Just talk about it. Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, for us, it was a, a good solid day to start the season. Obviously, you want to try to win the race, but um, sometimes you're just happy to, to keep rolling and, and going out of here and head to Atlanta with a, with a solid day. So uh, really proud about my team and, and how they handled the week and, and adjusted on the car and did everything that they needed to do and, and um, came out of here with a solid day. So I thought we were going to at least have a chance and back up to the, the 88 there and, and try to get to the 22 coming off of turn four. But in the end, that, that didn't all pan out with the caution. So um, still a good weekend for us. <laughs> Thank you, Kevin. As I said, our third place finisher, our defending race winner. Certainly, he had a, uh, a car that uh, was competing again for the win today. And that's Dale Earnhardt Jr., driver of the number 88 Nationwide Chevrolet. Dale, just talk about your run out there today. You certainly had a very, very strong race car. Yeah, we did. I made a mistake there, but on that restart with 20 to go and just um, didn't do what I needed to do and got shuffled through the middle there. And had a fast car, was able to get some spots back and get a good finish so pretty happy about that but had a you know you don't get cars that good too often so like try to capitalize and a little disappointed congratulations to joey he's uh certainly done a good job the last several years and uh great to i'm sure it's a great feeling for him but and uh thinking about kyle over there in the hospital hoping he get he was doing okay enjoying the race thank you dale and uh denny hamlin with a strong showing out here today as well he came in fourth he drives the number 11 FedEx Express Toyota. Uh, Denny, congratulations on a strong, strong race out there today. Uh, just talk about how you thought things went for you. Uh, it went well, and, and really, uh, you know, all you can ask for is a, a chance. And really, when you start on the front row uh, on a green-white checkered, it's you got a 50-50 shot. It's just a matter of whether your line um, forms up better than the, the other line. And, and ours just didn't form up well. And... Uh, allowed the 22 to get clear and really everyone on the top lane to, to get clear of us and that was pretty much it so you know we um, it was a good day though we, we obviously uh, you know, came from the back and ran up front all day so proud of our whole FedEx team and, and Dave for doing a great job uh, you know working together for the first time and you know excited excited about the whole year and obviously thinking about Kyle as well like Dale said thank you Denny we'll take questions now for Kevin Denny or Dale raise your hand Please try to limit yourself to one question. Jim Peltz, I saw you first. We'll go then to Jim Peltz, Bob Pockers, Jim Utter. <laughs> Jim Peltz, the LA Times. Kevin, before the caution came out with three to go, I mean, did you feel like you had Joey set up to uh, make the pass or what? Uh, with, you know, with coming to the white, you never know what's going to happen. Um, you know, obviously everything shuffled out to where these two guys were nose to tail behind me, and I just... Maybe I should have backed up a little bit harder, but I didn't want to back up so much that they just drove right by me. I, I wanted to try to time it so that I could have them to my bumper by the time I got to the middle of three and four and, and have a good run down the hill coming off of four and, and have a shot. So, you know, that didn't, that didn't pan out. Didn't even have a chance to try to, try to time it out. But um, still just really proud of my team. And, and, you know, the way that they act and react to things is just, um, you know, just, just really good. So feel really good about where we are. Go to Bob Pockris, then we'll go to Jim Utter, Maybe Pete Pistone, and then we'll go to the press box. Uh, Bob Pockris, ESPN. Dale, did, if the caution didn't come out, did you think you had? Huh? Did you have a move for him, and could you have? Kept I was going to push him to the victory. I was in eighth, I think. <laughs> Shit, I didn't have nothing going on. <laughs> the last caution. Oh yeah. Oh, well, I was in eighth, um, and I was just kind of the, the outside line got going really good, and I. You know, it was going good enough that you didn't want to really disrupt that by going to the outside of the guy in front of you. We, uh, we needed to kind of get clear of that bottom lane before we got to racing. And, uh, you know, once we got clear, we sort of strung out. It was just uh, not enough laps to form anything. 
Um, I think even if Kevin backed up, I don't know whether I'd have stayed with him or whether Denny would have stayed with me. You just never know what decision you're going to make that moment. Absolutely, I would have, no doubt. All right, well, <laughs> you just never know what you're going to do. And, um, you know, you got you, you got to try to win the race. And uh, it just didn't, we didn't get time to make a run. I wasn't in a good position to think about winning, but we were going to do what we could. Let's go to uh, Jim Utter, Pete Pistone, and then we'll go to the press box. Go ahead, Jim. Jim Mutter for Char uh, Charlotte Observer for Denny or anybody else who would like to answer. Before the the uh, gr ch uh, caution that sent us to the green-white checkered, you guys were running three wide, about five to eight rows deep for 10 to 15 laps. And I think everybody in here and probably on television were wondering, can you do this all the way to the finish? Just could you talk a little bit about what it was there the last 20 laps running like that? I, it's, I mean, it's, it's intense, especially when you're in the middle. Um, you know, you've got guys side drafting off both sides of you, and, and you're trying to pull them back. So I think, you know, the drivers have just gotten so smart over the last uh, really year and a half, I mean, uh, as far as working their mirror, working the, uh, the side draft, that uh, you, you, they don't – guys don't break away anymore. They don't, they don't, let, they don't let them get free because they, they just side draft so much. So that's uh, – I mean – there was a good chance we could have ended the race on a three by three, eight rows deep. But uh, um, I think Joey got clear of that uh, anyway. So um, it was all going. Joey had the upper hand if that you know if the caution didn't come out because everybody else was just you know you know side drafting each other and nobody was really. It'd been tough to make a run on him. Pete. Uh, Pete Pistoni, MRN.com, Sirius XM, NASCAR Radio. Kevin, when I talked to you earlier this week, we talked about this weather and how this was going to change today. Did it make as big of a difference as everyone thought it was going to? And if you guys want to chime in as well, that'd be great. Oh, it was a it was a huge difference. And, and for us, we were banking on it. I think we lowered the track bar four inches and put a couple percent of nose weight in it to start the race and, and made some some pretty big adjustments, you know, just trying to go off of your past experience and what you felt in practice to uh, to try to anticipate where the handling went. We went a little bit too far and wound up a little bit too tight, but my car was very manageable, uh, so I could be pushed. My car was tight enough, Denny, to be pushed. <laughs> <laughs> That's good, man. That's why I push you guys. That's right. <laughs> yeah, so we were, we were all pushing and shoving. Uh, it was fun uh, racing there at the end. I was, I was in the top lane with the 15, and, and we would just scrape off the wall a little bit, and that's when, when you knew that you were high enough to push the guy in front of you. And, um, but it's, it's fun. Uh, let's go to the press box for a couple questions. Go ahead, press box. Uh, Viv Bernstein, New York Times for Denny. When, when uh, Joey washed out at Gibbs, a lot of people thought maybe he would never be the driver that some thought he would be, and now we see he's emerged there. Why do you think he's changed so much? And, and now how, do you view, how differently do you view him than, than you did when he was a teammate? Um, he's a different driver, really, and, and I think some situations just suit you better. Um, you look at, you know, when, when he left the 20 car, the 20 car instantly ran better. When he left, he instantly ran better. So some, you know, I, I just think, it, you know, the situation didn't work for him, and I think uh, he, he, you know, matured and, and figured out, uh, you know, he did his homework, and he's really, you know, become one of the elite drivers in our, in, in our sport. And um, every single weekend, you, you always have to know you're going to have to beat the 22, and that's something that we didn't say uh, about Joey, you know, just three years ago. So I think he's, he's with a great situation, and, and their cars are really good, and, uh, you know, he's just made the best of it. Go ahead, press box. Nate Ryan, NBC Sports. Uh, for Dale, about that move again with 19 to go, did, did you think that a teammate – would go with you or did you, were you trying to tuck him behind Jimmy? Did you think you were going to get help? Yeah, Jimmy was on the quarter panel. He was in a great spot on the guy in front of me and I thought he was, you know, if I could get in behind him, he was going to shoot past in the lead. Maybe I could tuck on that quarter panel a little bit, but somebody got on that right rear quarter panel. I didn't think that they were that close in the outside line. I thought we'd got a couple car links on the outside line, but they were they were right there. Just uh you know, one of the moves, you make a lot of good ones, you make some bad ones and I made a bad one too late. <clears throat> uh, let's come back downstairs for questions. Questions down here. Let's go to uh, let's go to Lewis. And we'll over get here. a couple over there. Go ahead. Lewis Frank of Reuters. <laughs> Compared to the the week before, this was a relatively clean race. Do you, does anyone have an opinion, or did the owners threaten you with the uh, broken cars? 
Well, we we find we got two two races to get it out of the way. <laughs> we sat around all winter, and maybe we were just a little off. I don't know. So, I think running the race during the day and with the low downforce package, uh, all the drivers seemed more comfortable. We had some balance issues out there to work with, and I think that keeps you on your toes and helps you understand where your car can work and where it can't. And uh, just a good package as far as the downforce and the track starting to age a little bit, starting to lose a little bit of grip. But just running the race during the day really helps a lot. I agree. I think it really the, the slick conditions it make us give – we have to give each other a little bit more room because you can't just – pin the guy down off the corner because you know he's going to lose his front end or back end so it makes us give each other a little bit more room and uh, when there's total there's enormous amount of grip we all just feel like we can run inches off of each other and, and not going to wreck so uh, I agree I love the day race it, it really puts it more back in the driver's hands and and definitely this package does as well let's go over here to the far right guys to Marty Marty Smith Marty Smith, ESPN. Uh, Denny, this is for you to start, but I'd, if you two want to weigh in, it'd be awesome too. Denny, you had the Jeff Gordon fan club laminate. What would little Denny have said knowing he raced in the Jeff Gordon's final Daytona 500 with Jeff Gordon? I wish you would have pushed me to victory. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Yeah, uh, he tried pushing me a bunch, but for whatever reason, it, we hit the brakes every time he got to my rear bumper. But it was it, it was awesome, you know. I, I was he showed a lot of strength uh, throughout the day, as as well as the '88, and they just stayed up front all day. And you just knew that those were the guys you're going to have to beat. But unfortunately, when everyone knows you have fast cars, sometimes you get hung out, and uh, I think that's what ha happened with him. And uh, but yeah, it's a he's going to be missed. He's one of those few guys on a super speedway like the Daytona 500 with a few laps to go. You can know you can you can give him no room for error, and he's typically not going to make a mistake. So, uh, you know, he, he's going to be missed. Jay Pennell had one, and then Tom Jensen. Uh, Jay Pennell with Fox Sports. This is for Denny. Uh, the situation with Matt today, uh, coming in, Crafton coming in, did you guys sit down and talk with him before the race? And uh, just walk me through that. Uh, Joe, Joe grabbed us all by the collar right before we went out and uh, told us, you know, we we got to work together and and do whatever we can to to get a to get a win. But uh, you know, this is a you know this it's a tough situation to try to throw Matt uh, into, and obviously his first start uh, in the Daytona 500. I, I'm sure you know, those trucks never had handling issues like you know these cars probably had today. So uh, I'm not sure uh, where he ended up, but uh, I did see him at, at one point and. He was holding a pretty wheel, so. <laughs> Finished 19th. No, it's good. Go ahead, Tom. Tom Jensen, FoxSports.com. Over here to the left, guys. This is for anybody who wants to answer it. You all seem pretty relaxed, and you guys all drive for top teams. You're all fiercely competitive guys. Does the chase format that knowing you're going to race, probably going to race for a championship at the end of the year, make not winning today easier to swallow? I think I know for, for me, I'm ready to go to Atlanta. It's just, it seems like we've been here for a month. I'm glad today's over. You're relieved. I'm relieved for my team uh, that we had a good, good solid finish, a good start to the season. And I'm excited about, you know, everything that, that we do on our, on our mile and a half stuff. So I'm looking forward to, to going to Atlanta. And that's really what it's all about is trying to, to win a race to get yourself positioned in the, in the chase and, and be able to try to win more races if you can do that early enough. Yeah, it's just about trying to win races. It's kind of disappointing we didn't win today because that helps make the rest of the season a whole lot different. You can call races completely different once you get that win under your belt and get a lot more aggressive on pit road and with fuel mileage and stuff like that to try to even win more. So that worked great for us last year, getting that win early. Well, uh, you know, you assume that you're going to be part of a battling for a championship, but we have we got reminded yesterday and, and I got reminded two years ago at California, nothing's a given. So you got to uh, – you have to – Live in the moment and appreciate the moment, and uh, you know you just uh, you got to continue to work hard and, and try to put yourself in that position. But you know what happens in Daytona does not is not a direct uh, you know result of, of how you're going to run uh, during the season. So I'm I'm with Kevin. Let's get to Atlanta and, and kind of see uh, who's got what. 
Take one more question here. We'll go right here to this uh, young lady right here, and then we'll finish up with Dwight. Donna Beth Wileman, Benicia Harold. This is for Kevin Harvick. Um, as reigning champion, do you ever hear it from anybody back home in Bakersfield? I've already been. Yeah, that was the first place I took the um, Sprint Cup trophy back to, to my high school, and we had a pep rally. So um, it was pretty cool to be able to, to take that trophy and set it in front of those 950 kids that were in the auditorium that day and, and show them that if you really put your mind to it and, and follow your dream, um, you know, it can, it can all work out. So uh, we're also going back there the week between Phoenix and, and um, California, too. Final question. Uh, Dwight Drummer, State.com. Uh, for Dale, you, you had the momentum, of, well, well, you didn't not take in a win coming out of Daytona again, but you, you had the momentum of, of a third place going in. Talk a little bit about what's that like for you. Yeah, I mean, it's not, you know, you don't imagine the 16 guys are going to win races in, and you want to try to put points together just in case you need to lean on that and fall back on that for the to make the chase. But you know, there's no guarantees. You just um, like to – you know, take good cars like we had today and, and win with them when you get the chance to drive cars like that. So, But I got a great team, and I feel like that Greg's going to be awesome, and hopefully we're going to have more opportunities this year. Well, Kevin, uh, Dale, and Denny, congratulations on, uh, on a great performance here today, and thanks for putting on such a fine race for us. See you in Atlanta.